Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.11. We're going to look at complex fractions and order of operations with fractions. Now, before we start, I just want to mention that the word complex, don't let it frighten you. It's just what we call these type of fractions. It's actually just a different way of showing something that we've already worked on. So you know how to do these. We're just going to look at them a little different. And what we mean by showing them a little different is this says 1 3rd divided by 2 fifths. It's sometimes called a multi-story fraction. So when we have a multi-story fraction, it is essentially just 1 3rd divided by 2 fifths. And we could rewrite it to a way we're familiar with. Maybe we say 1 3rd divided by 2 fifths. So these two mean the exact same thing. So we're going to explore two methods of approaching complex fractions. And the first one is method one. It says simplify the numerator and the denominator separately to single fractions. That's step one of method one. S multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. That's a step that we're familiar with. And then simplify if necessary. So let's review that. Simplify the numerator and the denominator separately to single fractions. So if we have a, a complex fraction that maybe has addition or subtraction in the numerator and addition or subtraction in the denominator, we want to do that addition or subtraction. Simplify it to a single fraction. Combine it. That's what step one is telling us to do. Step two, then we just do what we've always known to do with fractions, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And then, of course, we always simplify our fractions. So let's go back to this first one here, where we had 1 3rd over 2 fifths. Essentially, 1 3rd divided by 2 fifths. So we're going to multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. And that's what we do here. Since they're already single fractions, we just multiply by the reciprocal of 2 fifths. So we have 1 third times the reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 halves. So we can see nothing's going to cancel here. So we just multiply the numerators. 5 times 1 is 5. And 3 times 2 in our denominator will be 6. 5 6 is the simplified version of this complex fraction. Let's look at another example. Here we have 4 over x over 5 over 2x, or 4x divided by 5 over 2x. Now, step one, simplify to a single fraction in the numerator and the denominator. Well, that step's already done for us. So we can do what we've always done before, is if I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So the numerator is 4 over x. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Well, that would be 2x over 5. That's my reciprocal. So now I can go ahead and maybe simplify, multiply, or vice versa. 4 times 2x would be 8x over 5 times x. And then I'd have to simplify that. But I recognize beforehand, because sometimes if we simplify first, we'll have less complex values to deal with. An x on the bottom can cancel an x on top, because any number over itself is 1. So we can cancel these x's. An x on top cancels the x on the bottom. And now we just multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. And 1 times 5 is 5, 8 fifths which we could then write as a mixed number if we wanted to. But the instructions didn't uh, tell us we had to. So let's take as minimal amount of steps as possible, 8 fifths. All right, here's an example where we're going to have to apply step one, where we have to simplify the numerator to a single fraction and then simplify the denominator to a single fraction. Now, 3 minus 1 half, well, we can write this as to have a denominator of 2. I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2, my common denominator, which we can always think of that as 3 over 1. So 2 times 3 is 6 
over 2 times 1 is 2. 6 halves is the same thing as 3. So I didn't change its value. I just changed the way it looks. Minus 1 half. So I've, now I can simplify that. 6 halves minus 1 half. 6 minus 1 is 5 halves. And then I do the same thing to the bottom. Well, I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 over 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 fifth. And then I can combine these, now that they have a common denominator, 21 over 5. 20 plus 1 over 5 is 21 fifths. Now that we've simplified the numerator to a single fraction and the denominator to a single fraction, now I can do step 2. Multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. 5 halves times the reciprocal would be 5 21sts. So don't think you can cancel here because you have a 5 up here and a 5 down here. Because when we multiply, we notice these 5s are not opposing. There's not a 5 in the denominator. So don't try to cancel until you get to this step. Now I see none of these have a common factor. So I can just multiply. 5 times 5 is 25. And 2 times 21 is 42. This is already simplified. Nothing reduces. As we've seen here, nothing canceled. All right, so that's method one. Simplify to single fraction in the numerator and in the denominator, and then multiply by the reciprocal. Method two is a favorite of mine. Uh, if you'll notice, it only has two steps here. The first step is multiply the numerator and denominator by the LCD of all fractions. And this is underlined. I'm going to underline it again because it's very important. And then we have to simplify. So what does it mean to multiply the numerator and denominator by the LCD? Well, <clears throat> we look at the fractions we have in our complex fraction. And we just identify their denominators. This has a denominator of 3. This has a denominator of 5. So I want to find the LCD of 3 and 5. Well, I know that's 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top by 15 and the bottom by 15. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm essentially multiplying by a value of 1. 15 over 15 is 1. And multiplying by 1 does not change a value. So now I can say, OK, 1 third times 15, or we can think of it as 15 over 1, the 3 and the 15 have a common factor. So I have 1 times 5 and 1 times 1, which is 1. I get 5 over 1, which is just 5. And then I do the same thing in the bottom. I can say, well, this 5 can reduce that 15. And now I have 1's in my denominator again. 2 times 3 is 6. Now notice this one step, multiplying by the LCD, I've come to the answer 5. 6. And uh, I reduced as I went. So this answer is already reduced. We're all done here. If we look at the next one, I just have to identify what is my LCD of all the fractions involved. Here I have an x. Here I have 2x. My LCD has to have a factor of 2 and a factor of x. So my LCD is 2x. So I'm going to multiply by 2x on the top and 2x on the bottom. Again, we're multiplying by 1. Well, here, if I think of that being over 1, this x can cancel that x. And so I have 4 times 2 over 1 is just 8. Here, the 2 cancels the 2 if I think of that over 1. And the x cancels the x. So everything canceled here, I have 5 over 1, which is just 5. 8 fifths. We recall saying 8 fifths. Maybe we want to write it as a mixed fraction to get 1 and 3 fifths. But that's not the case here. Now this one here, we have to be very careful. Because we're multiplying a sum or a difference. So if we determine, OK, this is a fraction and this is a fraction, that's what's going to determine my LCD. 2 and 5, their LCD would be 10. So I want to multiply this by 10. But I have to multiply the entire numerator by 10. So I put parentheses in there. I'm going to use the distributive property, something we've discussed in previous sections. 
So I'm, again, multiplying by 1. But because there's a sum or a difference, I have to use distributive property. So I'm going to write it this way. 10 times 3 is 30. 10 times a negative 1 half, or negative half of 10, would be 5. And it's a negative 5. A positive times a negative. Negative 10 halves is 5. Then we do the same thing in the bottom. 10 times 4 is 40. 10 times 1 fifth, or 1 fifth of 10, which is 10 divided by 5, is 2, a positive 2. And now I simplify. 30 minus 5 is 25. And 40 plus 2 is 42. Just assess, are there any common factors? This only has 5 times 5, and this is 6 times 7, or 7 times 3 times 2. But either way, they have no common factors. That's simplified. That's as far as we can go.